Speaker, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said, all my life I dreamed of going back to my home on the Hudson River. It was the center of the world. He was referring to his habit late at night of remembering being a child before he was stricken with polio, before he was president, before he was burdened with the awesome responsibilities of his office during a time of war. Because being a child on the Hudson River, sledding down the hill behind Hyde Park and feeling totally free. And he remembered that as a president, to forget the burdens of his office and to remember the miracle and dream of his youth. Those of us who are blessed to represent the Hudson Valley understand that the Hudson Valley writes its beauty on our personalities and on our very souls. It inscribes us with its timeless beauty and as it flows on endlessly by, we're reminded of the fleeting nature of our service and of our very lives. But a group of artists, including Thomas Cole, Asher Brown Duran, Jasper Francis Cropsey, Frederick, Frederick Edwin Church, somehow by hiking and sketching and experiencing the Hudson River Valley found a way to translate what it means to those of us who live and work and raise our families there into these permanent lasting images. And our own modern day genius, Greg Wyatt, has found a way to capture them. And so we pause here tonight to honor that. Drawing inspiration from our natural environment, these artists began painting scenes and now sculpting images from across New York and our country. Asher Brown Durant, one of the original founders of the school, has one of the most beautiful pieces anyone will ever create of Beacon, New York. It's called Beacon Hills on the Hudson River. It was painted across the river in Newburgh in 1852. Today, my office Newburgh looks out at that same image, at that same beauty. Frederick Church was one of the first to capture Niagara Falls back in 1857. Within two weeks of its debut, his piece had lured 100,000 visitors to pay 25 cents apiece to view it. Not only did the Hudson River School influence the modern day environmental conservation movement, but these paintings actually inspired the establishment of our national park system in the early part of the 20th century, which was of course formed by President Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt couldn't have spoken more true words when he said, there are no words that can tell the hidden spirit of the wilderness, that can reveal its mystery, its melancholy, its charm. But again, our painters from the Hudson Valley found that hidden spirit and that charm that Franklin and Teddy Roosevelt both remembered. Dating back a hundred years, my neighbors in the Hudson Valley take great pride in our natural resources and protecting and conserving this unique home for us and for our children and for generations to come. And I want to take just a minute to recognize my predecessor and our former colleague, Congressman Maurice Hinchy and his family who have joined us here tonight. You know, when you follow Maurice Hinchy in, in the Congress, you have some very big shoes to fill. And I've heard a lot about Congressman Hinchy and his service, and I always enjoy the stories because it sets for me an example of what I want to do in this body. You know, after Congressman Hinchy sacrificed for his country as a Navy sailor, as my own father did, he became a respected state lawmaker and he proudly served here for two decades. My neighbors in the Hudson Valley 
know that he worked tirelessly for them, for economic justice and equal opportunity, because he believed that this government should work for everyone, including someone like him who grew up in a working class family and spent some time working in a factory. Because our country, as Congressman Hinchy understood, is better off when leadership like his supports ordinary Americans, people like him who served in our military, our veterans, our working and middle class families, who struggle to put food on the table and pay the bills, but who can also appreciate the beauty of the environment and the timeless wonder of places like the Hudson Valley. Congressman Hinchy played a critical role in the modern environmental movement even before it was widely recognized as important. Back in 1996, when I was working for President Clinton, Congressman Hinchy was authoring legislation that the president signed into a law that established the Hudson River Valley National Heritage Area. Because of Mr. Hinchy's leadership, the Hudson River Valley National Heritage Area currently links over 100 individual sites from Saratoga to Westchester, while showcasing the Hudson Valley's unique role in American history and development. And I want to commend Barnabas McHenry, who's with us here today, who has dedicated so much of his life to that same mission. Because of their leadership, my children, my grandchildren, will see and be able to treasure the Hudson Valley's unique and incredible scenic, historic, agriculture, agricultural, and natural wonders. And Congressman Hinchy always made sure that we remember the rich contributions of the Hudson River School of Painters. Congressman Hinchy knows, like many of us do, that there's no place in the country that compares to the Hudson Valley. And those of us lucky enough to live there are not surprised that it was the birthplace of America's first and greatest school of art. In closing, let me just say, not long ago, a friend of mine came over to my home, which is across from West Point in Cold Spring, and actually looks down the Hudson River towards Garrison and south towards the Bear Mountain Bridge. And I walked him up to the property and the sun was going down. And a short while later, after he left, he, he sent a note and he said, Sean, I once saw a sunset like that in a Frederick Church painting. And I thought he made it up. But when I saw it with my own eyes at your house, I understood for the first time what inspired these great geniuses to try to capture the wonder and beauty that is the Hudson River Valley for all time. And we honor their success in doing so tonight, and we honor those who continue that legacy uh, who join us here tonight. Thank you on behalf of a grateful Hudson Valley and a grateful nation. And I yield back, Mr. Speaker. Chair, sure, I'd like to remind members to refer.